So what I'm going to try and do today is I'm going to try and get this game and emulate it on the PC in WinUAE. Uh, trouble with that is to emulate this game you need to emulate the Amiga, which WinUAE does, but it doesn't give you the software like this game, but also the Kickstart ROM. So the Kickstart ROM is basically just a piece of software on a chip. This happens to be like a Kickstart ROM 20537-300. So this is out. Um, this is a Kickstart ROM out of an Amiga 600. What I'm going to do is I'm going to see if I can get a copy of this, a copy of the Kickstart ROM, and put them into WinUAE on the PC and see if I can actually get this to emulate these two things. So that's the plan anyway. I'm going to do that using my Amiga 600 and there's a reason for that. The reason is because this thing has a compact flash card in the side here and what it is, so it's a, it's a compact flash adapter and it's got a 256 megabyte compact flash card in it. And this thing's just formatted with FAT. The Amiga can read a FAT formatted drive and the PC can read it as well. So the good news is I can, I can take files between here and there using this. In addition to that, I've also got this USB adapter here that allows me to connect this to the PC. So I can get files on the PC with this and I can get files on the Amiga with this at least the Amiga 600. And this is just one that I bought from Amiga Kit and it comes with some software and you install it in Workbench and it magically works. Well, not quite magically, but it works. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna download WinUAE. And what I'm gonna do, this is the first trap, I'm gonna download the 32-bit version because the 32-bit version contains the Amiga programs that I'm gonna to need to transfer the ROM onto the PC. The 64-bit version just has WinUAE and nothing else. So you want the 32-bit version, even if you've got a 64-bit platform, this is the version you want. So that's my WinUAE downloaded, and I'm gonna pop in the compact flash card on this adapter into the PC. And there it is. So there's my SanDisk, two, it's just called SanDisk 256, and it's empty basically. I've just not got anything on it. I'm gonna need that in a minute. I'm gonna extract WinUAE just into a folder here. This is not an install version. This is just an, um, a version you extract. And this is the actual emulator here. But what I want to start with um, is this Amiga programs folder. And there is a program called TransROM. So that's what I'm gonna to use to copy the ROM off the Amiga. So let me take that and I'm just gonna just gonna paste it onto the SanDisk drive. So there it is, so TransROM is just on the SanDisk drive. So now if I go back to the Amiga, I'm gonna pull that from the PC. I'm gonna stick this back in here. And put this back in the Amiga, there we go. So that should pop up on the Amiga because that's all the software's installed for that. And if I open this up, uh, it doesn't show anything, but that's because the Amiga doesn't show anything unless it's got an icon, and you can tell it to show stuff. It's a bit of a weird thing, but that's the way it does it. All files. There you go. So it is there. Um, and what we're going to do is we are going to go to the shell. And I'm going to go to Compact Flash. That's CF0 for me. And there it is, so the TransROM's there. Now, I believe you run this and it will actually just dump the ROM, but it dumps it to the output. So it's gonna dump it to this output shell window. And I've, I've actually had a go at this previously and I made this mistake, you just type TransROM in and it just starts dumping it to the window. And you, you really can't, it's quite hard to end it. So I think I've gotta pipe this to a file. So I think I'll just pipe it to CF0. Um, so this'll be, this'll be kickstart uh, 205. Don't know the exact number. There's some slightly different versions, I think, of 205. Um, but let's just call it .rom. So hopefully, this will actually dump the ROM that's in the Amiga into that file. Oh, that was really quick. Has that actually worked? Uh, I suppose I can just DIO in here. Well, there's something there. Well, that's a good start. So now, I can just pull this compact flash out of here. Right, and now I can get this into WinUAE and we'll see if we can boot this Kickstart ROM, the one that came from my Amiga, in WinUAE. So this is going back in the PC now. 
So there it is. So now I'm back and I've got my I've got my trans ROM and I've got my Kickstart 205 ROM and it is 512K. That's the that's the correct size for the ROM. So I'm probably just going to dump that. I'm going to cut that off there and I'm going to dump it in the folder. I'm going to dump it in my folder next to WinUAE here. There probably is a better place to put that. But I'm just going to dump it there. If I run this, so I'm running WinUAE. Right, so uh, it's got a configuration here and basically you can kind of just choose the model and it will just set up the configuration for the emulation the way you want it. Now this is an A600 I've got, so I'm gonna say A600 again. Now it's gonna tell me that it wants one of these Kickstart ROMs. So I think the one I just got, um, I'm not exactly sure which one it was that I just picked up, but it's one of those three. I think the one on my chip here, the one on my little chip here is 37, 300. I think the one I just got is 37350. So that's the one that I've actually got in this machine here. But this, this one is actually one of those ones as well. So I could put this in and copy this one as well. So um, there is a system ROM path that it wants, I think. So if I just go to ROM, I can actually just tell it where the main ROM file is. I'm sure there's a folder somewhere where I'm supposed to put these and it, and it does it a bit nicer. So if I just try that and there you go, it's not, I don't think it's complaining anymore. So if I just hit start now, in theory, this is gonna just boot an Amiga 600 for me or the configuration for Amiga 600 uh, with basic non-expanded configuration. So that's one megabyte of chip RAM. You could even go for two. In fact, this, is, this one's actually got two megabytes of chip RAM. So let's go the same one we've got there. Now it's still complaining about the ROM. Why is it complaining about that? Well, let's just try and start that and see what we get. There we go. So it was it was three five three seven three five zero was the ROM that's in that computer, and I should pull this one as well because this one's a slightly different one. But but that's it. So that's um, so basically the Amiga when you load software on the Amiga, it's the software that it's asking you for in the disk is just one part of the software. Um, there is actually like a ROM on there that's got some software that's always built into the computer, and without that, you can't really boot it. So that's fine. So basically, I've got enough information there to boot an Amiga just up to the boot up screen and do not much else. Um, and I know this one is 205.37.350. So that's the Kickstart ROM. Yeah, so the next thing is, is, is I actually want to get this, a copy of this, so that I can boot it in the emulated Amiga. Now, I think I can take a version of this. I, it may have some copy protection on it that stops me but um, I'm not exactly sure. I'm gonna try it anyway and see what I get. I think I might be able to do it. Uh, and I'm gonna do that with a program just called ADFer. Now ADFer is a, is a program for the Amiga that can just take uh, a floppy disk and turn it into something called an ADF file, which is just a file representation of what's on this disk. And WinUAE can load those. So I'm gonna download that now. Yeah, so this is it. It's on Aminet. So this is this read and write ADF files to or from floppy. So this is an Amiga program that I can download and I can actually use this to take the contents of this floppy or any and just, and then I've got it and I can put that on the compact flash and I can run that on the PC. So I'm gonna download that now. So it's this LHA file and here it is. And I'm actually just gonna, uh, I'm actually gonna extract this as well. 7-zip can actually extract this as well because LHA is a compressed archive. So I'm just gonna extract this as well to adf -er. so these are the files I actually want. I'm just gonna transfer this adf -er and adf -er info, I'm gonna transfer that to the compact flash drive. Yeah, so I've just put adf -er and adf -er info onto the compact flash drive. So this thing's going back in the Amiga, this is proper sneaker net stuff. I mean, you may have a better way of doing this, you wanna link these up with a serial cable or something like that, I don't know. Uh, let's just have a look on here, let's just see if that stuff got there. So there's adf -er. So I can actually run this. Um, oh, there it is. Yeah, it is actually there. Let me put Toki in the drive. That was just a blank disk in there to stop it doing the Amiga heartbeat. And I'm just gonna run this. This is a really simple program. It just basically, you've got read, which will just read a disk that's in the drive. So I'm gonna read that, and it's probably gonna ask me where to save it. Um, let's save it onto CF0. So this should just read the whole disk and it's gonna write it to a file on the compact flash drive here. Now whether this works or not, I don't know. There could be copy protection on here that's gonna stop this from working, I don't know. 
But ultimately, I mean, I own the Kickstart ROM and I own this copy of Toki, this is original version. In fact, I own two Kickstart ROMs. So um, I would say what I'm doing here is legal. I'm just using my own software in a different way. Yeah, and when it's finished, it just asks you to do it again, which we're not interested, so we can just quit. So we should have that on the compact flash drive. So I'm gonna pull that out of the Amiga now. I'm gonna pop it back into my PC and we'll see what we've got. Yeah, so there is my toki.adf. So I'm gonna take that. I'm actually gonna, I'm just gonna cut that and I'm gonna put it in the same folder as my WinUAE just for now. Just gonna dump it in the folder next to my kickstart ROM. Right, now I'm gonna boot WinUAE. Oh, it's complaining about the ROMs again, why? It didn't remember the ROM path. I don't know why I didn't do that. Just, just remember the ROM, please. No, I think to make it remember this, I've got, just got to save the default configuration. Is that right? Yeah, I think it keeps forgetting when I start up. I've hit save on that. Oh, you must select a configuration name to enter. Okay. Name, I'll just call this A600 to two megabytes with the 37, 350. Let's save that. So let me just quit that and see that it can just do that again. It doesn't remember these settings at all. Oh, well, it can remember that. Okay, so I just have to do that and then load. Does it remember the ROM if I do that? Configuration, load. Yeah. Okay, it can remember that. So I've got to save a configuration and load it. Right, the next thing is, uh, we've got two emulated drives down here on Quick Start. So um, I don't know why there's only two, because the Amiga supports four. They've just shown you two on here. But I can select an image file for DF0. And I'm just gonna select my Toki that I just made the ADF of. Because all I have to do now is start, and, and technically the Amiga's gonna see the ROM that I selected on here and it's also gonna see this uh, ADF file as being the file that's in the floppy drive. So I'm just gonna start that and see what we get. I don't know if this is gonna work. Oh, it's gone black. Hey, there we go. How cool is that? Uh, I haven't got any sound. I'm not recording the sound. I've got sound coming out of the computer. Oh, there is no sound. I remember now, there is no sound on this bit. Wow, it looks nice and crisp on here, but that's because uh, I'm not used to the Amiga looking this crisp. Ah, it's so cool. That actually works. Oh, yeah. Have I actually got a joystick plugged in? This is this looks wrong, doesn't it? Amiga 600 with an Xbox joypad. Oh, whoa, wait a minute. This is totally working. I didn't, I didn't change any settings, but this is totally working. Oh yes. Well, how cool is that? So yeah, there you go. I took my Kickstart out of this Amiga and I took my copy of Toki and I transferred them and started playing them on an emulator on the PC. This is quite well emulated actually. That just works. So now for the real test, I'll, I'll boot the Amiga and I'll start this at the same time and we'll see what we get. I've got the Toki disc in here. Right. Oh, I think I've, I think I've mistimed it. So the real Amiga's on the right, which is a little bit stretched and the fake Amiga is on the left. I think the real Amiga is taking longer. Is it? Yeah, it's taking longer. Yeah, you can see the colors are slightly different. That might be this uh, converter box that I've got. Now, how cool is that? I mean, it, just emulation in general is very, it's just very cool. So it's loading the demo, I think. Yeah, so you can see that, I think the real Amiga is taking a lot longer to load. Maybe? I mean, I did start them at different times, but 
Maybe if I press the mouse button on both of these, the PC and here at the same time. Maybe I'll get it. Oh, there we go. Oh! No, I thought it was going to do demo mode, but it didn't. Wow. So the sound you're hearing, though, is from the PC. That is pretty cool. So there it is. So I transferred the Kickstart ROM and I transferred um, this disc and I plugged them on the PC and on an Amiga 600 simultaneously. So there it is, emulation. Emulation is one of the coolest things in the world because it allows you to keep this kind of hardware working. Like there will come a day when this hardware doesn't exist anymore, but this emulator will carry on. So um, I think it's really cool that people are getting that kind of stuff working and there's been a lot of effort put into things like that. That, like having something that can emulate a system so accurately is I think quite amazing. So there you go, in conclusion, that was me transferring a Kickstart ROM and a disc off my Amiga and onto, onto the PC so I could emulate it.